What's up guys, welcome to another YouTube video, and in this one we have a very hard and long decision in Act 1. It immediately, on the next couple floors, pays off and turns a little bit wacky, and this is a fun run. I remember having fun when we played this, so hope you guys enjoy. Drop a like if you do, it helps the videos and the channel grow. Got you guys in the next one. Peace! Somebody came in and he like, he took all the spots. Yeah, we're, we're playing Ironclad for just to get it, we're getting a sample size. It won't last forever. Oosh. Ooh, rare relic. Uh oh. Looking spicy, eh? Rare relic for a curse. Ooh, boy, oh boy. Tantalizing. Intoxicating. We do want to do elites, though. And it's less intoxicating when the removal is gated behind an elite. We also cannot snipe. Now I know everybody loves Bradley Cooper and has some patriotism towards American Sniper. We are not American Sniper right now. We are just not a sniper at all. Yo, thank you, man. Thank you for the 100 bits. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it a lot. Appreciate the support. Welcome to the stream. We're gonna we're we're gonna have some longer runs. We're on a three win streak right now. This might be I don't know how long the run will be. Depends on how hard it is. But here we just can't show, relax, crack jokes, attempt to backseat successfully, backseat fail to backseat. You know you know how it goes. And look at us gifting us up to BJP. Thank you so much. We just started and uh, the trains is going. Thank you. Okay. Here's what's gonna happen here. If I take this curse. It also depends on what curse it is. Cause I do wanna get this path on the left. It's a lot of hallway fights though. What about the path on the right? No no campfire. It's hard to say, man. Okay. It's a writhe. It's a writhe. How intriguing. Turn one is important, because turn one is the turn one of all the hallway fights and all the elite fights. I mean, I don't know how to say, turn one is the first turn. And because it's the first turn, it ends up being important. You know, just age old wisdom from Jeremiah here. What's up, Keeks? Okay, let's see here. Yeah, I got a haircut like a, like a week ago, maybe. Maybe like about a week ago. About a week ago. You missed a couple of runs. Short counter is pretty good. Short counter is okay. I mean, it doesn't proc that often. For the elites, it gets played in like a Volan fight, okay? And sometimes it gets played in triple century fight, sometimes. But if you're getting play at a triple century and like a Volan, you might be taking a lot of damage along the way. Yo, Hummel Howes with the Twitch Prime. Thank you, and the hype train's coming. Train's coming, boys. Grab your kids, grab your packages. Um. What I can say is that the Stone Calendar is very good, though. Stone Calendar is relevant. That's 52 damage on turn 7. And we need that to kill the Hexagos in time. So that's a really big advantage. You hope it doesn't get played in Mob Pipes. Exactly, yeah. How have you been, Kigs? What you been up to? Alright, so here's what we got. If you want to remove the Rise, which you probably do... I do double campfire, do two elites. Hundred bits hype, let's go. Yeah, it could be nice for two centuries, that's true. Eighteen damage next turn. 
18 damage next turn. Ah, not even exact. Huh. Okay. to bring balance to the force, not destroy it. Okay, so... You woke up a, a, about an hour ago? Damn. I mean, I guess it's better to wake up like relatively early than wake up like in the evening, you know? Depends. Uh, Thunder Cleave is a good uh, AoE right now. Good AoE, good uh, Act 1 attack. I'm down for the cleave. Now we can talk about true grit and how it can affect Writhe, which we're probably not keeping, to be honest. It also can get rid of the burns. Sure, true grit can do those things. Cleave is AoE attack early game. We're going for two elites. It seems to be better. I don't know. Don't know if I want to do another character because uh, this is a lot of time investment. I guess I should have thought about removing the curse here, going here, and going this path. I only get one elite. Over here, I get two. Okay, but one. Oh, -hoo! oh -hoo -hoo, my lord! Oh my lord! I need to make a coffee for this one. All right, so I would say this is a sub three hour run. Sub three hour, okay? Probably a two-hour max, but we'll see. We'll see how we warm up and get into it. That's a really good relic. Trickle in. Oh, the, the, the hype train was there. Thank you, guys. And, uh... And yeah, it's just trickle in, trickle in, trickle in. We have a Toxic Egg on floor three, floor two. Toxic Egg on floor two. Oh, well, yeah, we're just in a different wa wavelength, right? We, we're not in speed running. We're in winning... Win rate wavelength, even though I've messed up. A so, what's funny is my win rate is pretty good right now. My win rate is decent right now, and I, um. <laughs> and I, me I completely, like, messed up and botched three runs. Like a buffoon. I'll be. Shh, get out of there. I think the win rate can be even better, actually. Which is why I want to end on 23 and 7, but it's crazy, so we'll see what we can do. Let's focus on winning every single run from now on. Oh boy, okay, a lot of decisions, a lot of decisions. Whew. Cheers, look at this coffee. You can't see it, okay. Let me get my dog inside here. Uh, I'm conflicted here, because do I want anger for damage or shrug it off plus? You get anxiety when you work from home? Do you feel better being in the workplace? How does anger play versus shrug it off here? So do I go for the fight or do I go for like try to get removal here before the shop? Oh my god! Excuse my language. I'm being so loud and so rude. The whole point is that I want to remove Rive, but let's reevaluate. I, I hate going to shops this early. Trust me, I do, but I felt like Rive was worth it to remove, okay? Jesus. Wow. Pellets is gone, it's unfortunate. 
These two I don't care about that much. Pele's being gone is a little unfortunate. Penny Button would have been nice. Penny Button is a good card, but we want to remove right. Okay. And now, do we need Blood for Blood for damage? I would say perhaps. If we're here and we're at a shop and we're wasting a floor, I will get that. And that'll be my upgrade alongside Cleave. Perfect block. Shrug it off flush. Perfect block. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, you have trouble focusing and stuff. I have the same I have same issues. Instant burn is gonna be like on uh three for this fight, which is good for triple century. Okay for lack of bowling as well. Gremlin Ops is good for lack of Gremlin Ops. So I always went a little fast, but it doesn't matter. Here we are. Instant Spreader 3 is perfect for all three elites. Gremlin Ops hits the big one. I like it. Lack of bowling, I can manipulate it. Triple Century is relevant. It's not perfect for Triple Century, let's be honest. For Triple Century, is the worst one. Not to mention, though, now we are like thinking do we need extra damage? So Twin Strike versus Pommel Strike. Um, Twin Strike just to get extra damage because our damage profile is pretty bad, or a Pommel Strike because it has greater upgrade utility, better late game card by a uh, a long shot. Calendar, if it plays in centuries, is painful, but yes, it could play in centuries. Yes, it can. And Sprinter could buy it sometime on the wrong turn, to be honest, but it could buy it sometime. I mean, you don't really want the counter to be. The end all be all, but sometimes it ends up just being necessary in the centuries, and you don't have a choice about it, which is fine. Um, so it comes down to damage here. Damn, it is hot in here. I need to put the air on. What's up, Pizza Monster? Okay, okay. Yeah, we're gonna start going exactly. Panic button and uh, pellets in that shop was good. Unfortunately, I, I felt the need to get. To the shop to remove a writhe, and then I end up getting kind of awkward floors along the way. I like Pummel Strike more. Pete, <laughs> you always find a way to mention it. I, I support your streaming, man. I support you. How did your stream go? How did you go? Vajra. Alright, like a bull then, let's go. So I can stall all the way for the stone counter, but I want to take use of instant Sprinter, obviously. And of course the Vash. And stone counter is relevant in this fight. I can take this one hit because I get blood for blood in the deck. So instant Sprinter blood for blood is good. I block again because stone counter is relevant. After this is a not nothing turn. Then I have to block one more time and the snow counter is the following turn. Do we should we do that? I mean yes, we should. Of course you wanna ah oh, well we might even have lethal. We might have a little bit of lethal before that, but not to mention we have good block. Thirty one. 31, 12, 31, 12, 7, 19, that's 31, a little bit little before that, some calendar you could have been relevant, burning packs, uppercuts, and iron wave, okay, what's up Draco? Burning Pact. If only I had energy. Got a mall bank, which is interesting, but not what I want to see right now. Uppercut is my first weekend and a good upgrade target. I can upgrade the uppercut. I don't mind it. I think weekend's a good stat. 
Um, burning pad can manage the burns. Burning pad can manage burns, but it's a little bit. So burning pad is one of those cards where you take it's a curse early game, but it becomes better in the future. We talk about these future proof cards. Do I, do I can I squeeze in a future proof card, or do I still need to solve some of my damage? Right, I still need to solve some of the weakening and damage. So uppercut's a good pick here. This is a future proof card that the card draw actually is not utilized very well. Let's say a world where Bluffer Blood is actually zero cost, the card draw is relevant, but most of the time it's not relevant. Only time that Bluffer Blood and Burning Pact or Burning Pact is picked here if I have Bloodletting Plus in my deck. Now I have a self damaging card that gives me energy, and then the card draw plays the cards that because you have energy, and then the Bloodletting makes Bluffer Blood cheaper. So, matter of fact, we really want. We really, really, really want uh, a bloodletting here, and only then would I make the per uh, perfected strike. Sorry, only then would I come burning packs. But for now, I take uppercut here. Another shop. Oh, what is what's this loss? What is this, dude? Mob bank gets ruined, but I get impervious plus. I also lost potion belt. And brutality is also very good because of blood for blood and card draw. But then I lose my mall bank, which is losing how many, how many, how much gold? Ah, oh, why is that the why is there a shop here, dude? I lose how much gold? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm losing so much gold, hundreds of gold. So I just wasted a relic completely. And are we even well equipped for the Hexaghost here? So Potion Bell is out of the pool now. I don't care about these being out of the pool. These are, these are good. Getting these out of the pool is very good. Alright, so the gold gain is going to be like 134. And I'm also spending 90 gold on Impervious. So would I buy an impervious plus for 220? Would I buy impervious plus for 220? We need it. It could help and actually always fight for the big hit, but so does Instant Sprinter. Wait, didn't we talk about when you Instant Sprinter on three in order to block the, the second hit? All right. Do we need the Impervious? No, no, we don't. But, I mean, getting this before the boss is not bad because now Barricade becomes an option. Let's just stay here for a little bit, guys. Real quick, I need I, I need to warm up. My brain's not ready yet. I have a lot of things to talk about. I haven't talked about all the things that you talk about. Let's do a quick little chess game. Anybody want to play a quick little chess game? Okay. I think we're buying the impervious. So it's a I'm basically spending 130 gold in this 100. I'm spending like 100 and um. 30 something gold on average. Do I want to take damage from Blood for Blood or what? Do I want to take damage in general? Do I want to take damage in general so that I'm not full life going into Hexaghost? That's a Pons Bleeding. So I wasted Mobbing, which is like, I wasted like 130 gold. I basically bought Impervious for 130 future gold. Plus 90 that I had. But I would buy for 90 regardless, but. Would you buy for 220? Well, no. depends because it's also like getting early is significant, I would say. So I bought it for 220, but it's also like the upside of me having it early. You know, the life that it saves, but also what it can provide. I mean, it sucks that I saw a shop in that event. I don't know. I don't know if I want to take damage here.
It was a blunderful game. Yeah, me and T picks we blundered left and right. He blundered a queen, I blundered my queen. It's funny because I saw the queen trap there and I was like, you know what? If you go to queen uh, C1, I win your rook. I didn't see queen C3. I blundered my queen right back. And then I could have taken your rook with the pawn and been up the material or at least better in the exchange. Instead, I decided to go up two pieces. I mean, it was ridiculous how bad we blundered. What a ridiculous game. If I double attack, I get two procs of blood for blood, and then next turn I take no turn, no damage. But I also have impervious coming up. I don't know if I want to double block though. So let's do the math. If I strike strike, this guy's gonna be at um, 14 plus 3, so he's gonna be at 11. I'm taking 11 damage, I mean he's gonna be at 18. 18 puts him within cleave strike range. If I leave him at this, he's within cleave pommel strike range, but that's fine. Cleave pommel strike range is fine, so I can actually double block here. I'm good, honestly. How you doing? Depending on what we draw, we have lethal. Alright, I almost have lethal there. I gotta wake up a little bit more. I gotta wake up a little bit more here. We probably didn't play in this fight, but we want to end this fight on three, right? So we want to try to get a fight because we want this to end on three. Because we want um three for the <laughs> <laughs> The game is saying you fucked up, little boy. You spent all that gold on an impervious, and here it is. Oh my god. How the chess match treating you? Yeah, I almost blundered my queen and lost the game for an impervious. It didn't matter. All right, so we have two imperviouses. Is that good or bad? Here's the second question, though. Fire breathing is damage for hexagos. <laughs> the calendar deck. We block for calendar. But what about fire breathing for hexagos? So if we leave it at, at three, we can survive hexagos for a long time. All right, all right. Impervious or riot, fine. Don't don't bring the riots out. All right, fine. And he ends at three. I need to send a three. Because we, we do want to have the instance for like the the, uh, the second iteration, right? So we ended at three. Now now we have a free turn on the big the second big hit of the uh, of the fight. Evolve! What? That's a crazy power. But do we actually want to evolve in the Hexagos fight? Wouldn't that cause all too many burns at once? We have, we have Elixir. Evolve with Elixir. Draw all the burns. Exhaust all the burns. What am I doing with this deck? A lot of flex and twin strike stuff. So we're doing damage with Blood for Blood. So now we think about Fire Pot. So do we like the Elixir because it actually draws with the Evolve and gets rid of the burns? Or do we like the ability to upgrade? What are we upgrading? Our Uppercut. We're upgrading Uppercut anyways. So what? Palmer Strike? I 
I'm trolling right now. I know, I'm trolling. Am I the double impervious? I mean, guys, we're so close to beating the game already. Firepot versus upgrading. You think upgrading defense could, could, could save a lot? I think upgrading strikes against us there in terms of damage. You don't think Blood for Blood is enough? Blood for Blood with Stone Calendar and Vajra is not enough to, to get us there? It's half meme, half reality. The meme was that I bought Impervious and wasted all the potential gold because it was just a gold and Impervious and then got one on the next floor. And I still think it's bad. It's just that... And we have good relics. I mean, guys, we're going to be great. We have good block. There's just a lot of things we can do. All right. Let's just think about this real quickly, okay? I keep getting distracted. Fire pot, 20 damage versus upgrading Blessing of the Forge, which could probably lead to more damage throughout the fight by upgrading Pommel Strike and my strikes. It will be maybe my defense. I don't know. Fire pot is direct damage. We can also think about saving this for the Act 2. So let's say we already beat the Hex Ghost as is. And we want to save Elixir for the burns, right? To make Evolve kind of better. By the way, I had to spend a day just editing YouTube videos, guys. I have a lot of YouTube videos. We have tons of wins we've had in the past week. I got to edit them and get them out into YouTube. If you see me on Discord, remind me, okay? I know, we're going to calibers the Sharper because we didn't spend, we spent the gold. Oh, what a slap in the face. Oh, look at this beautiful calibers you could have bought if you saved Mall Bank. Oh, well. Um, we can even save the Fire Pot for Act 2 instead of using it for this fight. But it's argued that we want to use the upgrade pot for this fight? What, why? To buy time with the defense? Really? For what? And what else? Upgrade attacks? Upgrade attacks is an extra, extra 3 to 4 damage per strike. Do we need the extra 3 to 4 damage or is not Blood for Blood not enough? Because we also, remember, we're not taking any damage. We're not taking any damage on the big, the second big hit. Plus, we have double impurposes for the first save if we need B. We also have weak and uppercut. We're pretty well equipped here. We have Vajra for damage. So then, if I were to take a pot into Act 2, would it be Blessing of the Forge or would it be Fire Pot? It would be Fire the Pot, right? Right? Hello, guys? Is anybody out there? Am I alone? Yes, you're alone. You've been talking to yourself the whole time. Okay. Alright, so we take damage here. So now, now Blood for Blood is, is free. Saving purpose. And now we, we don't take any damage from the next big hit. We have so much time. All we have is time. Can you feel it in the air, boys? Can you smell that sweet, sweet time? Mmm. Not a spice this time. With a Y. But an I. I'm a rapper and a poet. I'm that guy. Oh my god, what the hell? That was really fly. Right, I'm done. I'm, I'm, uh... <clears throat> I know time's a herb. I know. I said spice, right? Oh, I said spice. Fuck. I said spice, but they say spices and herbs. They bunch it together. It's bunches of words. We play Evolve, surely. Second off. Take six. Say, sorry, take 12. t -picks. It's See, this is the early morning runs where I, my brain is like really groggy. There's a flicker that I need to turn on. Coffee's not consumed. Um, I had double impurposes. I wasted mall bank. I blundered my queen against T-Peaks. Talking about spices instead of herbs. Yeah, we need to get it together. Uh, otherwise, we are going to blunder. All right. Twelve damage versus an impervious that obviously is always going to overblock. This is always going to overblock. We have another impervious in the deck. Herbs. You guys say herbs. When you say when you call somebody a herb, you're you're insulting them. Usually you say herb head ass. But I have uppercut for vulnerable as well. So uppercut's also vulnerable. 
versus taking 12 damage. Oh, we could probably take 12 damage because the, the, the thing is... There's a lot of block in the deck. Another impervious, two imperviouses, plus we're not taking any damage on the big hit. And if we get a really big turn full of burns, we have elixir to stop the birds. So we could probably take all the damage in the world. So we're arguing with 13 damage and 2 vulnerable is more important than taking saving 12 life. Who's arguing this? 2 vulnerable, 13 damage is more important. And Pervis can still be there. There's no way we lose the fight, right? With all the block, 2 Pervises in the deck, the Shrug It Up plus the Weaken, plus the 24 life that we're still going to have. Then this is going to be on the big hit. And if everything's is really bad, we have Elixir, right? Or we could just save 12 life. And then we'd miss out on two turns of vulnerable. Alright, let's do this. I mean, I should block a little bit though, right? But at this rate, I think I'm just killing with Stone Calendar. Because I'm missing out on 18 damage to block for 5. I'm missing out 18 damage to block for 5. But we can go long. But we can go long. Buff of Blood exists. Stone Condor is here. I want to reach it all with a better hand. What's up, Lord Mach? Now Impervious comes, right? Doesn't matter. So. We could, uh. We, we win. We already won. Stone Calendar. We, we can full block here. Stone Calendar. Blood for Blood wins. Matter of fact, I might even be able to keep Instant Spinner for floor one of the, uh, the Act Two. Can you believe it? I debated you guys. I was setting up optimally for the next act. Power Fire Pot for the next act, like I talked about. Barricaded Impervious. Oh my god. The game is trolling me. Triple impervious in 16 floors, and each one is upgraded. Yikes. In a good way. Yes, I guess. I guess we can say yes. Now we should take a barricade because we have two imperviouses already. I mean, if I don't take barricade with double impervious, I'm not the best on Clyde East Coast. I win where it's a lie. And I'm, I'm not a streamer, am I? I mean. So we're, we're taking barricade, but um. However, let's talk about decks not that bad, guys. All right, the only thing bad about this deck is all right. Everything's bad about the deck. If we take the third impervious, right? What we're arguing is that we love to overblock on every turn, and we might be um, a patser. No, we're not doing it. Okay, so we want energy. So do you guys want to give up gold? Clearly we don't care about gold considering the fact that Hallway Fights gives us upgraded skills. I've already wasted Mall Bank because why not? So you know what? I'm going to show, I'm going to stick it to the gold, man, and be like, listen, I don't give a crap about gold. Isn't that clear already? No, I care about gold. Okay, so let's talk about Choker. Currently Choker, we talked about Choker, doesn't restrict us. Doesn't restrict us. We don't have uh, we don't have the mummified hand of the of yonder years, and even with mummified hand, we still manage with mummified hand choker to to survive and do things. Here, six cards a turn. Who, when, where? Who, when, where? Keep my gold. Keep my potions. I've had choker with mummified hand dead branch, and I still won. So, you know what? I'm not even scared of Choker anymore. I've done so much crazy things with Choker. I might be a status at this point. I've, wear, I've worn so many Chokers. I might have to start a new community. And join as... No, I'm just kidding. All right. So, um, let's uh, talk about Elites. Let's talk about Elites. How many Elites? What Elites? And... We can't block elites to death, but we can. Right, but we can. Why? Because Stone Calendar. Oh, slavers, you're hurting me. You're hurting me so. Impervious, impervious. 
What do you know? Incense burner, boom, three turns for free. All of a sudden, stone counter, 52 damage. Slavers is done. All right, same logic. Gremlin leader, free turns, impervious, impervious. Decent AoE of cleave, it's whatever. Before you know it, stone counter, cleave, and uppercut. Game's over. Book of stabbing. Book of stabbing is a little bit more scary. Constant damage, constant barrage. Stone counter, boom. So everything plays with stone counter. I hope I painted that picture. Okay. So, this three elite path looks pretty good. We get some hallway fights, which are good. Toxic egg. We get some events. There's some positive events in this game called Act 2. Namely, apparitions. I might take apparitions. Why not? Free turn, free turn, free turn. Generate block. Barricade impervious. Get even more block. Never take any damage. Before we know it, the fight starts. We've had three free turns, and we have 200 block. And then we just win. And then we just win. It took me blundering a queen to realize I have an ignition in my soul and Slay this Power is about to get dominated. That's what it needed to blunder that queen, baby. But let's, let's talk about the events. Apparitions, actually good. Actually huge. Okay. Uh, library, Matt, magnificent. Library is toxic dead galore. The nest, hate it. Vampires, despise it. Vagrant, I'm stealing him dry. I'm robbing him blank. Forgotten altar, it's whatever. Actually horrible, don't want it. Mass bandits, sure. Let's do it. Old beggar, why not? Um, Alright, so we like the events, but do I want to see three of them? Do I want to see three of them? Alright, time to update the mods. All right, guys. I want to just be the straight go if you if you can. The info mod two by Casey on GitHub. All right. Like that question gets asked enough that we should make a command for it. So yeah, up in the mods, and then um, the second one is a new command for info mod separately because that gets asked enough that people should have that you know the link in that together. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so we were talking about uh, three events versus, uh, yeah, three events. Let's go. Uh, the birds are a little bit annoying because we have instant burner, but what does that do for us? What do we do? Perfect. Slay the Spire. Slay, I recommend Slay the Spire. If you're looking for a game like Monster Train or, or Slay the Spire, you're looking for Slay the Spire. If that, if that makes any sense. Uh, we can go long in this fight. I need energy though for Barricade and uh, uh, Pervious. We need to upgrade Barricade immediately. I said I can go long in this fight. Was that line? Seven. Was that line? I was lying. We, don't, we can't go long on this fight. This is one of the hardest elite fights for uh, hallway fights for us. It's a really hard hobby fight for us, actually. This is a really hard fight for us. It is the rhythm of the night, night and day. Let's say drop blood for blood. If I drop blood, it's a different story. If I drop blood for blood, full block will do. 
Basha went to delicious. Basha, we got barricade. Barricade and a second and a third impervious for us to take. So we have instant burner already stacked up. And we're wasting instant burner. Ah, instant burner. Oh, fruit juice. Flame barrier. Okay. Don't you love that? When you fight the birds and they drop the card that would be good against them. Same with Book of Stabbing. Book of Stabbing is a little bit easier now. Book of Stabbing, we have energy. I mean, we have uh, Flame Barrier. Okay. I said energy because I realized I need energy. A lot of two cost cards. Barricade. Look at this. Look at this. Barricade would be great to play because I had two Imperviouses coming up that I wanted. If I play Barricade now, I'd probably save more life in the, the fight. But I could just do free turn Impervious, free turn Impervious. Free turn instance burner and then stone condor wins the fight. Right? So as much as I want to play barricade, first off, we need to upgrade barricade yesterday. I hope the Elite Fight doesn't kick our ass because we don't have upgraded barricade. Yikes, man. Hmm. Alright guys. Oh, Sour Charge, good luck with your vaccine, man. Uh, congratulations. Good luck. I would say we are this is on a four win streak. We're, we're this is for the fourth win streak. And I'm sort of trolling, so if I get trolling too hard, let me know. I'll reel it back. Okay. Evolve is a deck card, but it, it's like a deck card that you take in your deck that becomes amazing later on. I'm not trolling too hard just yet. Um... So I'd take 21 instead of blocking for 16, but with the imperviouses, we're going to be frail. Okay. We would have overblocked here, but would have... So we would have overblocked there. But we have weaken. So we can block here. Next turn we have full block as well. At that point, let's say we stack up impervious. Uh, stack up the instant burner to four. Because let's say this is all three elites. Let's say this is all three. This is all three events rather. All right. So then we have the elite at four, which is perfect. But I mean, five is not bad either for slavers. I would say four could be decent as well because we could do impervious turn one and then turn two nothing. So it really depends. If I get turn one barricade, then I can. So this helps me buy time to play barricade basically. I saved the life here. I'm trying to get killed with Buffer Blood here. We can play Barricade now, but the fight's already over because we, we draw to Buffer Blood and the game's over, right? Am I missing something? So we have Instant Burner. We got a potion as well. Boom! Heart of Iron, huge. Instant Burner is perfect for the elites. Warcry is actually pretty good. Warcry is not bad. It's upgraded, all right? Upgraded is actually a decent card. It talks about Choker. So Choker, Warcry is a little bit worse from Choker. I don't, don't get me wrong. But we're still not even near Choker. And remember, remember, know those turns where Barricade gets drawn and I can't play it? Oh, Warcry can help me with that. Okay. It's going against Rampage, and Rampage is scaling damage. Do we want scaling damage against Bronze Automated? Probably. We probably do want scaling damage against Bronze Automated. But we also can kill Bronze Automated with Uppercut Blood for Blood as well, and just overblock him. Unfortunately, against Bronze Automated, we currently don't have Entrench. Alright, so we're not infinitely blocking. Although we can probably outblock him to the point. But no, it's definitely Stone Calendar is going to play into the fight. And we're going for the kill at some point Blood for Blood. Rampage won't help me that much. Um, Warcry, however, does because Warcry can manipulate when Barricade is drawn. For right now, when it's not upgraded, but also it's a card draw that is useful to find the Impervious or the Barricade in any fight. Plus, as exhaust things come together with certain powers, it's going to become a better card. However, unupgraded, I want to mention unupgraded Warcry is pretty trash. Life Coach, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Just uh, Spart Spartacats, uh, thanks for the first round. I appreciate it, man. 
I'm just making a joke because earlier life coach, she had a run with three unupgraded war cries and he was so frustrated. And I, it was just funny because, you know, three upgrade, unupgraded war cry plus like Mark of Pain, he had the wounds. He was getting all this negative draw. It, was, it looked frustrating to, to watch. I can, I can feel his pain. Um. All right, so Rampage. Rampage. Yes, it does some scaling damage against the Bronze that evaded, but it's not going to solve the fight for me, so I'm taking this. Our upgrade strikes in the fence. So we, do we rather do that or upgrade? I could, sorry, would we rather move a strike? We have one last strike. We have five at the moment versus upgrading defense in a barricade deck and upgrading strikes. I mean, this is just too much value. All right, more gold, sure. Do we want Ritual Dagger? Ritual Dagger does um, 15 damage if fatal. No, if 15 damage and if fatal increases meta scaling by three. Okay, that could be a damage source. I would say we currently don't have that much damage. So if we take this, this could be a big damage meta scaler that we could use alongside our barricade impervious stuff. Turtle to Ritual Dagger. We, we, instead of turtling for feed and getting that, we're getting uh, meta scaling off this and trying to get offensive uh, power off this Ritual Dagger. Does it help us? I mean... It helps in Act 4 Elite, sure. What we need the gold for? Well, we want the gold because the gold we're going over here. There's a shop in the midway, so that 50 gold could give us a break point for something better. The question is, do we feel like meta scaling this Ritual Dagger is going to solve anything? It doesn't play well with Stone Counter, it's true. Stone Counter puts it on its clock, like, oh, either Stone Counter is gonna kill, which a lot of the fights Stone Counter is killing, right? What are we doing? Barricade Impervious, blocking with Incense Burner. Turn seven comes around, Stone Counter kills. Where's Ritual Dagger fit in there? Well, Ritual Dagger fits in here, in the little small pockets, Uppercut, the Cleave. Remember, we have Vajra, okay? So Uppercut, Cleave, and, and Dagger's already killing. Already killing. So we can still squeeze in a dagger on the setup turns. Because this is turn 7. And in between those turns, we can still do significant damage and get dagger on one small dude. And if we start doing that like every fight, um, we can, before you know it, have like 20, 30 damage on a card. I just don't know if we wanted a 30 damage card. And for hallway fights, it's pretty good because, you know, a lot of hallway fights, I can't really afford to wait for turn 7 calendar. I mean, sure, maybe my deck can get to a point where it's just barricading pervious and then calendar's being used anyways, but for certain hallway fights, it still can solve some fights. Now, the difference is, is 50 gold. 50 gold will maybe hit a break point at this shop because we are going to a shop at some point. So there's that. And we're also losing 6 HP, which is 6 HP less we're going to have for this elite fight right now. Yeah, we are looking for Body Slam. If we get a Body Slam, we're absolutely using Body Slam. And now our offense is potent. <sighs> you guys are saying that 50 gold might come in handy more than a 15 da damage card in hallway fights. The fact that it exhausts can also... The fact that it exhausts also means it has some ceiling as well. The dagger's better on the watcher. Let's be that. Let's be clear about that. But for the ironclad, the dagger is basically saying, once you invest in me for a little bit, which you can probably get in the early hallway fights now, uh, I will be a twenty-five to thirty damage card for one energy. And how does that solve late game? That doesn't really matter against the heart. It's only good for Act Four Elite. It could potentially kill Act Four Elite quickly and solve that fight for us. But so can Barricade and Trench Impervious stuff on the same token, right? Low energy attack because we have high energy block cards. Sure, it's a block deck in the making. Yeah, this deck is most likely... I mean, we have Toxic Egg, so we're picking up a lot of skills. We have Barricade Double Impervious. I mean, yes, it's a block deck. 
like already is a block deck and it's almost fully a block deck but like yes it's already in the block deck territory of course it can be also be nice against act three elites if we scale it enough what well, act three elite so you're saying it can help against ritual uh reptomancer it won't ever one shot reptomancer but it could maybe kill a dagger and reptomancer what else giant head it's probably not going to kill or solve the giant head it will do damage but not solve the giant head i don't think so i think a giant head is going to be solved by block scaling nemesis yeah and it can help against nemesis because it can do a significant amount of damage when it's not intangible and it's important to squeeze damage in but wouldn't body stem do the same thing isn't body stem doing just the same thing as dagger but better oh god brother brother man but why you have to do this to me now But out of all of the events that I talked about, you gave me this. Where's the beggar? The bandits? The altar? The library? Where's the console of ghosts? Oh, brother. So we don't have golden idol, unfortunately. This is why I always like finding golden idol in Act 1. Because this event is so much better when you have golden idol. I mean, it's not even a question. The sustain is huge. Um, so we could talk about losing max HP. It's, we could say our deck is good enough for the these uh elites we have instant sprinter stacks we have potions already we have double impervious and stuff like that we're probably already good for these elites we can probably take the damage right and we're saying we we'll let take the five max hp and we'll be 23 damage down so we're gonna have uh 32 life relatively low now if we take the curse we have blue candle so we lose one negative draw throughout the fight plus minus one card and also minus one life every time i use this uh, blue candle but it's minus one draw in a world where um i have a lot of free turns with instance burner and i also have heavy attacks and heavy blocks so let's say i do a hand where i have impervious uppercut and the curse i'm probably playing uppercut impervious and the curse and it was like the turn wasn't that bad because i'm probably over blocking most of the time anyways and if you're over blocking most of the time anyways and you don't mind minus one draw usually you only minus i mean minus one draw sucks but it's less impactful when impervious is next to it that's what i'm saying if we take if we take the max HP, I mean, I still have more max HP, so I can say I don't even need the life. And now I have max HP as a resource for the next act. So you think you think this elite at 32 HP is totally doable? And then the hallway fight. Can we afford to rest? Well, we have to upgrade Barricade. That's it. All we gotta do is upgrade Barricade and maybe upgrade Palmer Strike. How bad is negative one draw? No, no, no. I would just upgrade and upgrade. I would be upgrading two cards. I would upgrade Barricade and Palm Strike. I don't think I'm ever resting. Why would I rest? You're saying I would rest after I take this damage? So then I would rest, then upgrade, upgrade? Minus one draw sounds bad right now. Minus one draw sounds bad right now. How bad is it? We have Warcry. We have uh, Impervious on, to, to go alongside it. We also have Instant Burner. I already have Evolve and Incendus Bane giving negative one draw. So negative one draw, Incendus Bane, Evolve, Blood for Blood on the turn where I can't play it. And then um, now this is going to be four cards. And no card draw on the deck. The only card draw I have is Warcry and Palmer Strike's not even upgraded. So you're saying the negative one draw is impactful. And, it, and besides that, we might have, we don't want to invest gold on removing it we'd rather just have only upside so we have max hp now but we have to upgrade barricade here though right but how bad is negative draw when we have instant burner and double impervious like buying us time you know what i'm saying 
So like once barricade is out, let's say we get barricade turn one, and then the next turn we have impervious, impervious. We're over blocking like crazy anyway. So how bad is one draw there? And I guess the question is like, once barricade is upgraded, we're not taking damage. I don't think. If we don't draw an impervious, we also have plus defend pluses and just shrug it off. Uh, once break is upgrade, we're not taking damage. Uh, like, probably any damage, alright? So I guess the question is... I'm going to this elite with 32 HP. Thirty-four. Let's go. Barricade, turn one. Cleave. I, what if I, do I want to take the damage? Or do I want to kill this so that he has a chance to summon again? I can get evolve out. I can take the damage, and now, now blood for blood is getting better, right? However, I want to kill the minions. So he, uh, yeah, we want to kill the minions. Do we want to waste a potion here? No, because we have twenty percent chances. Very low. And this potion, we don't probably don't need it for this fight. So encounter plays very well. We already have barricade turn one. This is really, really good. And then Heart of Orange much more better in the boss fight if we need be or in another elite, such as like Book of Stabbing, but maybe not even there. We need energy badly. So we've seen red and and uh, blood lightning are huge. So we can double strike, double strike. What if we leave this, this this guy up and just double block? Double block and leave this guy up. Because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm investing... I'm losing a block in order to kill this so that he... So it doesn't become a nuisance later, later on. Is that perf Is that important though? If I just keep stacking block, Stone Counter solves this fight. If you if you leave up, he only summons one. If I kill him, he summons two. Doesn't he summon two regardless? Doesn't it work like this? He's gonna summon two more minions, and now we're gonna have three minions next turn. Pretty sure. It's not like the collector. Like if you, I'm pretty sure he summons two always. So this, is gonna, this guy's gonna stay up next turn. But next turn is gonna be up with. Uh, gonna strike it, I guess. What? <laughs> he brought his gang of shielders. This is, I've never seen this in my life. I played the game for 3,000 hours. What am I looking at? We're both shielding up. I had barricade. He has three shielders. Who's going to win? Clip it. Oh, my Lord. I've never seen this in my life. Probably want to say bash, huh? This is a new one for me. And I played a lot of hours. I get instance burner stacking, zone counter stacking. Do I want to get bashed on the boss? They're blocking each other. Oh god, wait. He's angry. Think the Lord I have weakened, right? So encounter's coming in. Instant Sprinter is gonna be on what now? Oh lord. <laughs> oh, you're so scary. Oh no, Mr. Big Boy. Instance Burner's gonna be on nothing. I can stall the fight to make Instance Burner to be a little bit better, I would say. I do have a, a list of mods, yeah. So what I could do is just like... Because he's gonna do 18 damage. 18 damage, okay. Let's do this first. And then it's gonna be 18 damage. Plus a 52, alright? So we're looking at uh, 70 damage. All right, that's fine. And then we'll, we'll, we'll waste time. We'll waste time for, for instance burner. So 
70, huh? I can't do uppercut. How much? So where do we want? Where do we want engine sprinter on? Uh, just any other higher number. So what would be a good instance number number now? Just like uh, uh, three or four. Yeah, he's attacking for a lot, so I can't really do much there. <laughs> Bottle tornado. Sheesh. How do those? How do the kids say it nowadays? How do they do it? Sheesh. I don't know. I can't do it. Jesus Christ. What a high roll, man. The UK, the UK lads, how do they do it? A battle trans plus. Can we phone it in, boys? But it's like cheese, but they say cheese, sheesh, sheesh. Sheesh, sheesh. How do they do that? I'm sure that's like a, that's like really popular right now. I know in UK they say cheese. I don't know. I'm a boomer. Barricade versus evolve. Hey, you guys, have, you guys have never heard Ludwig? Ludwig goes like sheesh, sheesh. But I, my voice is too high pitched. Barricade is pretty important because you have double impervious in the deck. Okay. Evolve is the curse. <gasps> My only weakness. My only weakness. No, 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 no. Not like this. What is this? This is how we die. We die like this on this hill. Double impervious first turn. Okay. We always barricade, yes. But then I can't weaken. Like all my important things, all my best cards, my double impervious is my weaken to survive these fights is not here. Battle trends can help cycle sooner though. Yeah, we still so instead of barricade, we could just do uppercut strike. Alright, and weakens probably important more parent than barricade. But we are gonna there there's a big chance we're gonna get or we're gonna overblock, right? But if we decide not to do barricade, we can do uppercut. Now this is why up barricade is so it's such an important upgrade. I mean it's super important. But next turn we can probably block. On average, we have a lot of block in the deck, yeah? And then the next turn we have instant burner, so that buys time. And then the following turn we have battle trains and all these other war crime tons of uh, draw. But what if I just actually just barricade Sorry, uppercut now. If I uppercut now, then I still have barricade in the deck. But I have free turns. I mean, I think we need to do barricade, but I've seen uppercut. There was a there was a warp uppercut, but I don't know. I can't, in good faith, really suggest. Um, I can't, in good faith, suggest uppercut there. So now we want to stall this fight for instant sprinter, yeah? So we want to stall this at four. Four or five. Five is probably ideal. Reason being, five, we get barricade out turn one. No matter the fight. Slavers, book of stabbing, who cares? So I block because we're stalling. Now, stone count, we use this. Keep blocking. I mean, no, we don't even kill off some counter. We wait a turn after. We wait one more turn. And then we kill. One more turn. And now their elite is barricade for free turn one. No potion. Havoc plus. Havoc plus in a world with no dark embrace. No feel, no pain. No frozen eye. This is not for me. However. However, this is a block deck. So, let's say I play Barricade Turn 1, which we do, always. I don't care what Havoc hits. Havoc could hit a block. Perfect. Impervious. Perfect. A strike. 
sure. My blood for blood. A little bit painful in long fights. That, that's, that's a doozy. It could, hit any, it could hit anything but the blood for blood, I would say, for long fights. But even that, I can work around. So Havoc's okay. But if we get an Entrench, and we're probably going to pick up an Entrench if we see it, then... Well, then Havoc has another hit that I don't want it to hit. But we can probably work around that as well. Or Body Slam. Entrench or Body Slam. Uh, if Havoc... We can manipulate it with Warcry sometimes to gain energy. So sometimes we can Havoc the Impervious and play a lot more cards in a turn with Battle Trance. We're starting to touch Choker at that point. When you use Warcry and Battle Trance and Havoc, you're starting to touch Choker. Because Havoc is two cards. Two cards for one for one card, essentially, with the Choker. And then you only have four other cards you can play. So with Battle Trance and Warcry, you can start seeing how we're kissing Choker. I don't know if it's worth it or not. I think it's a little bit weird with Choker. A little bit. But... It still just barely kisses it, I would say. And I would say sometimes it helps me save energy and also thin out the deck. And if we thin out the deck, what's the benefit of thinning out the deck? Well, if we thin out the deck, we draw into the Blood for Blood and the Cleave more often, the Uppercut more often. We draw into Shrug It Off more often, the Flame Barrier more often. These are all premium block, premium attacks. So obviously thinning out is always a very good thing. We currently don't have any exhaust energies. Now, this is a deck that probably is going to future-proof into Exhaust Energies. It may not even need it. Honestly, this is probably an Entrenched Body Slam away from winning the game. I, and I mean that. Entrenched Body Slam and maybe something else, like maybe some like a Shockwave, I don't know. A Disarm, perhaps. Maybe a few extra cards, and we can probably win the game already. Our damage is the thing we have to start worrying about. Stone Counter is relevant for damage. But uh, in order to do some meaningful damage, we need Body Slam for sure. If we get Body Slam, then yeah, I think the game's over. But uh, regardless of all that, I would say... Sabers were fine. Free turn, free turn, free turn, stone calendar. And even if before the stone calendar, we, we can even find time to do uppercut cleaves and stuff. And we have flame barrier for damage as well. well we're fine against Sabers. But, that, but I do think the Havoc plays okay though. You think it's bad with Choker? We'll probably, we'll probably buy Frozen now if we see it, right? So we're buying Frozen now if we see it. So it helps there. Um, what else? Once you get Barricade Upgrade, everything's going to be super smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Barricade Upgrades can be huge. Um, 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 um. My pump was not necessary at all. Yeah. I, I, okay, I just got to think about having late game. So late game is where, because this is a future-proof kind of card here, it gets better with Exhaust Energy, but just barely, because the draw engine Dragon Brace is stifled by the fact that I have Choker. So having being two cards plus a draw card is actually a bad thing with Choker, unless we actually absolutely need it. And so what I'm saying is that, like, so I think Havoc right now can sometimes uh, thin out the deck for the recycle, which is nice, and sometimes play cards that are too pricey. I, I, I'll take it. I'll take, I'll take it. I, I believe in myself here. Upgrading bar Like, my deck gets 20 times better with upgrading Barricade. Let's see what relic we get. Huge. Huge. Oh boy. So we could take damage from Blood right now, or we could do six we could do 12 damage and get our block going. We could take damage now from Blood for Blood and do uppercut and have him weaken and vulnerable. We have evolved so the wounds don't bother us. So we're always playing barricade, first off. Now this does 12 damage and also retains 14 block. Okay, 14 block versus 14 damage. Actually, only two damage because we're doing six. We're doing 12 damage regardless. We're gaining two damage from this, but we're getting weakened and vulnerable for the next turn. And should I mention, it's three turns of weakened because I have champion belt. So three turns of weakened in place of 14 block. Three turns of weakened is make it only two because this turn the weakened doesn't matter. Two turns of weakened is probably worth 14 block. Eh, just give or take. So I don't mind doing the uppercut. Plus, it makes Blood for Blood cheaper, which is important for damage on the second half of the fight. There we go. Evolve. Havoc. Perfect. And we know, right, that we know that the Havoc can't hit the Blood for Blood or the Uppercut. So it's perfectly fine to play there. And now it made my deck even better.
So we want this fight to end. Uh, into sprinter, I don't know if we can stack it or not. We can stack it in the next hallway fight. Hallway fights are good because we have a toxic egg. We got weakened again. Three turns of it. Blood for blood. Lethal's coming already. Havoc. Huge. Blood for blood. And Lethal's already coming here. I can actually keep the instant sprinter in five. Which is actually ideal. The reason why we want it in five is because barricades turn one on every fight. And now we maintain the instant sprinter on fight. Stone Condor is laughing at us. We didn't take a single damage in this fight except deliberately. Giria is awkward as hell. Another Havoc, another Evolve. Don't need these cards. We're starting to skip. Hey, enjoy work, Radio Star. You can always watch the VOD, man. We'll feel you in spirit, okay? So, Giria um, doesn't do much for me at all. I already have Vajra. I can make... If I were to live Giria at some point, we'll run out of upgrades. Sure, we can get some extra uh, damage for Hallway Fights or Act 4 Elite. But this is through and through a block deck that is looking for Body Slam and probably looking for Entrenched and the game's over. So now we can talk about Swift Pot versus Elixir. Well, now that we're not fighting the Hexaghost and we don't care about like statuses on the Hexaghost, Elixir has been with us since Act 1. And we finally say, you know what? What Elixir offers us is exhausting cards so we don't see it on the recycle. So let's say we have a whole full hand of full of strikes. We battle trance and we exhaust all our strikes. What this does for the boss fight is now we only draw into the nitty gritty good stuff. The weakens, the damage, and the best block. Sure, Elixir could be useful, but we could also just do Swift Pot, and for things like Elite Fights, I can draw into cards I need to see quickly, and as opposed to going for the long form. I think for the long fights, we're kind of good anyways, but I'll be honest, in a deck with no Body Slam, the Bronze Out of Maiden is a little scary. Like, it might be attractive to get rid of as many cards that are bad in my deck, and Havoc will do the same thing against Bronze Auto Maiden because we don't have a way to meaningfully do that much damage. But I mean, it will add up. Once we get the statuses and stuff, it will add up. I think Swift Pot is probably better for the Elite coming up here. Elixir makes sense for the boss fight, but not for anything else. A second evolve is not necessary. Elixir is very situational, but it's very good on the Ironclad when you have the, your thing set up. So sometimes Elixir is huge. You know, if you have, like, a setup deck, it's very situational. Yeah, very situational. Draw is just generally better. Well, not just Branch. If you have Dark Embrace, if you have Feel No Pain, if you have all these things. A single Evolve makes Elixir okay, because, like I said, we, we held Elixir, and we were ha happy to see it in Hexaco's fight. Because if my deck was worse, the Evolve drawing all the burns and the Elixir doing a thing would have actually been relevant. However, we got Instance Burner perfectly stacked on Act 1. It was like, it didn't need to be relevant. But it, this was a situation where it actually goes Evolve. That, and, that alone, the Elixir was actually very meaningful. That could win you a boss fight. And that's not to mention that Elixir doing other things with, uh, you know, synergy, setup turns. The problem is when you're set up, most things win anyways. All right? If you're set up on the Ironclad with Exhaust Synergy, Elixir is just kind of win more. I mean, it is a bail, it does bail you out. And sometimes it's necessary. So Life Coach used it today because he was kind of having a rough rough run. Which I actually think was his fault in terms of the war cries, but that's it. But it, it, it does have a place. Um, here I don't think we need second, second Havoc. Second Havoc is a little bit of a meme. Alright, so let's see what the shop is. Hornclay is great. More block, sure. Sure, great is also the same thing with targeted exhaust to help things go... Um, help target the strikes and do the same thing I was talking about like instead of having a lecture we have true grit for the strikes and havoc as well and the deck gets thin and then before you know it we're just drawn into the nitty-gritty machines the statuses the damage the blocks right so shrug it off and flame barrier are, are the things we care about so I can see true grit being a place I also want to remove a strike because I think we just really want to get our purposes out and well this thing's a little bit weird because I'm sorry to see that. Hear that, T Peaks. This, this deck really just wants a body slam. Um, I would have bought a body slam if I found it here. It might just be better to get Hornkly. Because this is a block deck, and Hornkly is still going to be block that I, like, I'm always going to use. Would I take Hornkly over moving a strike here? 
And we have Barricade turn one always, right? So Honkly is just 14 block on turn two. It's, it's fantastic. And sometimes it, you know, go against instant better, but sometimes it just plays right into it. I, I mean, I like the, I like the Honkly a lot. It's just, it's just good. It's just good. But is it better than moving a strike? Problem is, now we don't have Truga to manage the strikes. It would be nice to have a Truga to manage these strikes, right? I mean, Havoc potentially could do it, but it's not guaranteed. I think Horkley's great. Now, the events. We talked about events. There's a lot of events we haven't seen. Like, the Augmenter. And Council of Ghosts. And Coliseum. And the Library. Right? And the Cursed Tome. So we still want to try these events, right? There's a 30% chance of... There's more of a chance to get a fight. If that's the, if that's the case, we're going to get a fight regardless. Uh. Evolve is better than Purvis? Here? What if we find Warcry here? Where can I put Impervious on top? Remember, Bash is weakened. No damage taken. So now Instant Sprinter wants to be on 5. How do we make that happen? Go the next two turns. How? By attacking. No, Intus wants to be on five because we wanted to turn one for the elite fight. Four is okay, but four overlaps with uh, Horn Cleat. But I don't have a choice in the matter. Oh yeah, we do have a choice. We're talking about we're killing next turn. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? I am I am silly. There we go, we got the trigger anyways. Is the cat alright? Why, why did it vomit? Alright. We got the trigger anyways. The trigger, we can start managing the strikes and now getting down to the nitty gritty we were talking about. Versus Palmer Strike, which is an upgrade for utility down the line, right? Palmer Strike plus is card draw. We get more card draw. We have battle trance now. We already have one Palmer Strike upgrade. Um, trigger just seems nice, yeah? But we need to start getting like entrenched. And body slam. I think palm strike up is fine. I like the card draw. However, is it better to lift here? If we lift, we just have a second Vajra. Now we have that. That strength is actually significant damage. Now that, now that damage is enough in a world with no body slam. That damage is what I'm using to win the game. So uppercut and and buffer button and cleave. These all are doing decent damage with the two strike with the two strength, and that is going to get us through this before we find body slam. Versus upgrading Palmer Strike, which is an extra card draw. Obviously, that's good, but I think one strength is a little bit better when... I think damage is a small consideration in this next fight. This boss fight, I mean. And Cleave is here. Left for Blood's taking damage here. Nah, I think lifting is better than recalling, I, 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 would, I would argue. I don't want to draw too much here because I don't want to play Impervious. Um, I could just do Flame Barrier. Flame Barrier is decent damage. But I also want to kill this and save 15 life. But I mean... Well, so TPX, from my experience, when I have with dogs, dogs intentionally eat grass because they have an upset stomach and they're trying to relieve themselves and they want to actually uh, expunge it. 
So when they egress, at least my dog, when they egress, it's intentional. So maybe your cat was intentionally trying to expunge something. It's the same thing with cats? Okay. Oh, I didn't even read Keeks. Keeks said that. Okay, so Keeks is on the same page with me. Yeah, they actually do that intentionally. So if you see your animal eating grass and stuff, then... They're trying to get... They're trying to release something here. Uh, what's it called? Double Impervious next turn. And then we have Stone Calendar. My, my dog does intentionally. My dog always eats grass to help himself uh, release. So we want this to be on zero, right? So when Stone Calendar kills, it's going to be on zero and it's perfect for the boss fight. Can you believe that? Guys, I can't make this shit up. I can't make it up. Wait, wait, we want to enter with that zero. Wait, wait, wait. High Ring is on turn six, right? So we want, we want to leave this fight with this on zero? So then we enter the fight, it's at one, and it's turn six hyperbeam, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. So we want to leave this fight with this at zero. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I mean, everything's per- Mo Buh. Buh. And now we add more powers that we want to add in the dark embrace, the field of pain, whatever. We'll figure it out. Powers? What is going on, dude? Alright, what? Well, remember, we're not out of the woods yet. Remember, guys, we still want like a, a body slam over in trench. Some dogs are propega, yes. Some dogs eat their own poop. It's just a little bit alarming. So, what you're saying, take Demon Form just in case, so just to have extra uh, scaling. Demon Form, we have a lot of free turns to play it. Why not? Just get some strength. So, Demon Form is still like. It's still like a curse. It's a curse that sometimes is okay. But if, if we have Body Slam, we immediately regret Demon Form. If we have body slam, we immediately regret demon form. Metallicize is a power that is okay with Mumford Hand because it makes other things free. If we never get body slam, demon form helps us. Yeah. If we don't ever get body slam, demon form at least helps a little bit. Sometimes. Sure, it helps a little bit by getting some strength. And we can, like, now when we're blocking and, and having all this block that we're doing, we could fall back on strength scaling and win the second half of the fight that way. Sure. Sure. So Demon Form helps in a world with no body slam. If we get body slam, we immediately regret this. So do we want to lift now? We have Demon Form. Do we want to lift now? It's a curse otherwise. Exactly. It's a curse otherwise. Do we want to recall? I mean, lifting is still sort of relevant, yeah? But with Demon Form, now I don't even need to lift. Lift helps in a hallway fights in Act 2. In Act 3, I mean. Lift helps with hallway fights in Act 3. Metallicize, so it gives us extra consistent block and another 3 block turn. Sure. Um, that's okay. That's, that's okay. 3 block a turn is fine, I guess. It also makes other things cheaper, right? And it, since it's 1 cost, a 1 cost power is pretty powerful because it can make like Barricade, Impervious, and Metallicize all in the same turn. Absolutely. Because Demon Form is a little more clunky, it's cost 3. Um, I'm also kind of entertaining chat here and just kind of like saying, you know what? Yeah, sure. Why not have a second win con? Because if we don't find bodies to them, I, I feel confident we're going to win this run. But let me not be overconfident. Secondly, I would say that um, lifting still helps in Act Three hallway fights. Upgrading demon form is kind of a mistake because we're probably not playing this at all in hallway fights. And by itself, it's already solving this fight. 
It's already solving this fight. It doesn't need to be upgraded for this fight. So I'm thinking about the hallway fights in Act 3 where I have 2 strength. Well, I probably won't upgrade Pummel Strike. <laughs> okay, okay. I also need a recall, of course. I don't want to draw. What if I. We don't, we don't really want to draw here, right? We could draw into Warcry, but what, uh, what if we draw into Impervious? It's not the end of the world if we draw Impervious. We want to trigger the strikes. We don't want to hardbind this way, yeah? Yeah, I'm so strong I could do with anything here. Palma Strike is just like a smallest upgrade, whereas Lifting is still relevant for Act two, 3, I would say. Somewhat, it's still relevant, sure, sure thing. If cleave, it makes, it makes Cleave closer to an Immolate. The closer you are to an Immolate with Cleave, the better you are. I know I'm exaggerating, but you get the point. You know, if I have Vajra plus 3 strength, all of a sudden, this is a, what's it called? 15 damage for 1. That's pretty significant. Palma Strike is still relevant, though. Especially with Mountain Hands. So card draw with Mountain Hands is even better. Now my question is, do we think we need Heart of Iron for this fight? Absolutely not. I can save this for the heart at this point. So what does Metallicus do? Alright, it gives us six block a turn. We have tons of block regardless. We're not gonna take any damage from the Hyper Beam. Alright, and then we have Demon Form for the second half of this fight. Or for right now. And I can take damage here deliberately, right? I take damage here. Because of Blood for Blood. Do I need to take damage? These minis are dying to the Stone Condor right after Hyper Beam. So I leave them up. And as soon as Hyper Beam is done, they're dead. Okay. I can focus on my damage on the Bronze Animator at that point. My question is, do I take damage? Take damage for Blood for Blood, and then also... Um, Come on, previous back. This is where you want to play Havoc. This is a decent Havoc. We don't want Havoc to hit uh, Battle Trance, right? We don't want Havoc to hit Battle Trance. We don't want it to hit Shrug it off. But we still think Havoc's positive. In general, Exhaustion is positive in this fight. Yeah, he's licking Impervious. We also want to get, you know, Artifacts off of this guy. Hit shrug it off. Okay. So now we have uppercut. We got havoc again. Havoc could hit what? Nothing bad. So we take no damage here. Stone Counter is going to kill this minion. And we already have enough damage for the rest of the fight. Stone Counter kills that guy. And now we want to set up Instant Burner for 5 for the next axe, yeah? If possible. We don't care what it hits. Set Stone Counter at 5? I mean... Sorry, I mean Instant Burner at 5? That's yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's entertaining the idea. Is it five? Five or four? Eh, it's probably just five. Fourth and progress, you ready? Okay. So offering. Offering's interesting. Um on an instant sprinter turn, it costs nothing in terms of HP. It, it, it does one damage, which is nothing, which is actually beneficial for blood for blood. And then it gives me card draw and energy to play everything I want to find. Okay. 
choker. So what offering does is saying, hey man, you're going to get choked out on this turn, especially if my hands are part of it. But that's okay because uh, the fact that you dug for five cards is pretty beneficial. That's what's offering saying. And it's going to hurt your HP on turns where you're not having instant burner. So that's pretty negative, the fact that it hurts your HP because I, I never want to rest. Um, so that's the other thing is that on non instant burner turns, it, it, it's painful. It's still, you know, with no sustain because I had no sustain in the deck, it's painful. Secondly, brutality. Brutality is um, also doing buffer butt things. And if we upgrade brutality, now it's innate. Now, innate brutality is meaning we're getting six cards a turn, which is fantastic. Six cards a turn is cycling to all the cards you want to see. And uh, what that also means is that because of Mom of Had Hand, sometimes it allows you to play Barricade for free and other cards in your hand for free and have a, a pretty well rounded turn one. Granted, you have card troll. Now, in a world with no backup prep, brutality is worse. But in a world where I have Battle Trance or Palmer Strike on turn one, there's two Mom of Had Hand energy things I can start hitting six cards on turn one. So, Brutality required an upgrade. Brutality would be like, I want to upgrade this and make it innate. And it's really valuable when it's innate because you get the bump at hand on turn one. You also get the six card draw turn. And, and that's valuable to me. But Offering is already pre upgraded and I already gave enough card draw on a deck that is set up deck. It wants to draw cards and play them. Okay. Also, Offering helps get Demon Form out. Maybe even more. It does cost six HP. Remember that. Sometimes we can play around it with instance burner, but that's not always guaranteed. Brutality, it costs one tick, sure, every turn, but because we're drawing six cards a turn, it will have us more fluid turns. It would be uh, it helps us set up as well. And it also helps us get a good turn one. So they're both decent. I would say the only thing that's holding brutality back is the fact that I need to upgrade it. And offering, offering still is a choker nuisance as well. Hey, DMAC Live, thanks. You've been watching YouTube videos, trying to get better, and I've been uh, trying to get better slider. Thanks for the great content. No problem, man. Thanks for stopping by the stream. I hope you enjoy yourself. Well, I mean, I have to recall. I may not even want to see Campfire at all. I might just go for all the elites and not see any Campfire. Campfire is pretty bad for me because all my cards are upgraded. And this requires an upgrade. The only thing about offering is that it, it does tap into... Um, it does tap into Choker pretty well. It's pretty hard, I mean. But it is card draw. So we could do Offering, one card, Impervious, Impervious, Demon Form, three cards, four cards, um, five, six. I mean, yeah. All right, so we can get Sustain now. Instead of healing for six, we heal for 12. We could transform three cards and say, oh, you know what, these strikes? I want these strikes to be turned into body slams and entrenched. Can we can we roll the dice? So actually it's not bad. Other thing is runic dome. Five energy a turn. I don't give a damn about intentions. I'm winning the game even without the intentions. Okay, we have five energy a turn. We have choker, but we have expensive cards. Flame barriers, imperviouses, demon forms. Okay, so five energy a turn obviously is not bad. We have battle trance. We can play a lot of big old heavy hitters. With offering, it's a little bit excessive. Well, that hand also gives us energy though, right? If we do Astrolabe, what, what is the worst case scenario of Astrolabe? Uh, what is the worst case scenario? Are there any worst case scenarios? Almost everything's good here. Almost everything's good here. Three clashes? Three clashes is very bad, yeah. Okay. Do we like Bloodletting? Bloodletting's probably still okay. Reckless Charge? Yeah, Reckless Charge is pretty bad. Because I need to evolve out first. Still manageable though. Um, if we, if we take the black blood, then offering is no longer a problem. We'll take black blood and the offering is, I can play an offering of fight and it's as if nothing happened. So then I just have a card that says two energy, five draw. That's what black blood says. Two energy, five draw per fight. Plus other fights, it might even be positive. We might, we, if we have instant spinner turns of offering and then black blood is just healing us. I like black blood. What the hell? GG. Alright, GG. What was the other card? I couldn't even see the other card. Close line? Yeah, let's game over. 
All right. Um, let's look for body slam. So let's go over hallway fights. Look for body slam. Fight the all the elites in game. I win the game. Now we don't gotta waste any more time. It's been two hour runs. I told you guys it's gonna be sub hour, sub three hour run. I said two hours maximum. We have twelve minutes to win the run. So that's crazy amount of elites. That's lift, lift, recall. <laughs> lift, lift, recall. Already done. Two events, three events, three elites. Are we scared of the elites when we don't have um, body slam? No, we have we have demon form now, and we have uh, entrench. Twelve minutes to win the run. Now it's a speed run. You guys want to see speed run? This is the speed run time. We spend an hour to get here. Before we do that, though, if we do have uh, three events, three elites, three events, three elites, get a shop in the mid. There's three hallway fights. One event, two events if I skip a campfire. And then even more events. Okay. And if this is three events, if we want that, or one event if we're doing the. Yeah, let's go this way. Since we were getting here. Yeah, hey, but we also have four wins in a row, huh? Four wins in a row, and what else? About to have 15 and 6. We'll leave it at 4 or 5. We can leave it at. How about we leave it at 5 again? Why not? I got it in trench anyways? Why? Should I take the second in trench? What about Dark Embrace? Dark Embrace is the card draw. I mean, the card draw. What is going on, dude? Dark Embrace is a draw engine. What does Dark Embrace do? It makes Warcry better. Actually, no, it makes Warcry a little bit awkward. Exhume becomes better. Ascender's Bane becomes better. I mean, can we even do any more trench? We have Muffet Hand with Dragon Brace. It's a draw engine. We, why do we need more than one entrench? You think Double Trench is better for consistency? Why would we need two entrenches? Dragon Brace just helps make our card do more draw. Draw means we can never not have a bat. We can never brick. If we never brick, we never lose. Dragon Brace leads to choker sad times. Muffet Hand Dragon Brace makes it a lot more playable, first off. Second off. It makes True Grit a card that draws. It makes Curses a draw. There's a risk of Havoc 1 Entrench. Ah, so you want to take in second Entrench so that Havoc is always playable. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll have it be known, I liked Dark Embrace more. But I'll do it for you guys. Oh wait, you guys, wait, 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 you guys. Wait, you guys are geniuses. Immediately turn. Hello? Clip it. Chat suggest second trench, and that's the first turn I get. What the hell, dude? What the hell? You guys are gonna feel so validated now. Like, man, I told you in trench was great, man. I told you. The complete nuts, turn one. Two powers. Impervious to entrench. Insane. Absolutely insane. You guys are feeling so validated right now. It's ridiculous. A hundred and sixty block turn one. My lord. Oh, we want to leave it on a five, right? This is awkward. Uh, I realized that. Oh, uh, my instance burner is not properly stacked. That's fine. That's fine. That's a good clip, guys. That's a good clip. I think we we gotta get back to clipping some more.
And there we go. Havoc actually got rid of one in Trench. Elixir makes his return. Do we take a Pummel Strike for more card draw? Or not necessary? Pummel Strike for more card draw? We already have a Battle Trance. We have one Pummel Strike already. And we have Offering. We probably have all the card draw we need, right? And instead of upgrading Pommel Strike, we want to recall and lift. I said I had 12 minutes to win, and I'm here thinking about card choices. For the sake of symmetry, huh? Because we have two Pommel Strikes, two Entrenches, two Imperviouses. Now we need a second Barricade, and then we have the, the, the Mystery of Twos. And we love symmetry. Pommel Strike's a decent upgrade, though. Ooh. So this makes us mid shop worse, but what would we want to remove? We want to remove a strike, probably, right? And then upgrade what? What's a random card I could upgrade? Okay, I could upgrade Evolve, Demon Form, or Bash. Alright, two of those are okay. What's the other thing? Just remove and save some gold? Why would we want to waste... Uh, 35 minutes. Why would I want to spend 35 gold on a random card upgrade? Well, is 35 gold more important at the shop? 35 gold is probably fine. Evolve plus. Statuses are positive. Look at the turn once. Blood for Blood is still fine because we have uh, like Blue Candle and we also have Offering from Blood for Blood. We don't care what it hits, right? We actually do care if it hits the uh, Offering. So Havoc was bad because it doesn't want to hit Offering, but we want to keep us at 5 for the, this Elite. So we want to end in 5. Remember, we're still looking for... Uh, We're still looking for what's it called? Body slam. Body slam makes this a lot easier. Hmm. It looks like instant burner is not gonna be able to be on five, which is sucky. We could we can get it there. We can get it there. We can get it there. I mean, yeah, whatever. Do we like seeing red? Uh, we don't really need it, right? It's choker, and I think we're kind of good on energy. Muff at hand doing good things for us. Seeing red sometimes can help with like battle trans turns, but most of the time it, it's just choker and doesn't actually help us. I'm trying to see where it could help us. So what's nice about seeing red as just a general thought is that seeing red is a zero cost card that makes Muff at hand target something better. Yeah, so if so, Mammoth Hand is not targeting Seen Red, then we have so much more energy gain because it's hitting two cost cards plus Seen Red is two energy. So that's like six or seven energy a turn. This is insane. But is there ever a turn that Seen Red's a curse? I'm trying to think. Because, yeah, but I assume just wins the game. Oh, but I, I, know we, I know you guys want to see it, but I'm going to say, like, I think Seen Red, is it ever not positive? It's not positive if we draw only defense. So when is seen red not positive? When it's like next to war cry and stuff? And attacks? Alright, so instead of fighting fights and these damn events, can I please get the good events? Alright, I haven't gotten any good. I want mind bloom or something. Where's all the good events? D They've been trolling me. Look at this. 
Look how it goes, turn one. Instance on five. How do I accomplish that? Instance on five. Accomplished. Feel no pain. This deck's a big low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Feel no pain. Is it a uh, positive? Is it positive against awakened one? Not necessary, right? Because once you get entrenched, we have infinite block. Infinite block of entrenched. What does an extra four block per exhaust do? Nothing. And it's bad against awakened one. We already have infinite block of entrenched. Can you believe we're skipping Feel No Pain Plus? This is the one time where Instance on 5 is bad, by the way. The one time. Also, I'm holding these potions to the grave. So what do we care about this hits? I don't want it to hit Offering, but even if it does, it's whatever. It's the only damage I'm taking in this fight. And it hit that, which is fine. I would have liked to play Uppercut. Demon Form. We should upgrade Demon Form at this point. Because we are using it quite a bit. I could take Offering, because otherwise it's like... I'm not taking any damage in this fight regardless. So was the better pick? Think so? Nah, I think potions are gonna be useful. We just gotta get the right. Po I mean, heart of iron is gonna be nice, but it's completely unnecessary. We need something better than heart of iron. Our potions are pretty trash. I lost my one of my only damage cards. Let's bring it back. Trigger was fantastic, guys. <sighs> Trigger was perfect. So, instant at five. Yeah, and we're high rolled. Trigger at five. I mean, this is at five. Yeah. It's not gonna get to turn twenty. This is not gonna get to turn twenty. We got. F <laughs> oh my god. All right, guys. Well. We knew it was GG. Uh, we got power through. Power through is so not necessary, right? Because we already make a perfect block. Um, headbutt can sometimes bring back entrench. Do we think that headbutt entrench is necessary or not really? Because we have double entrench regardless. Now there are sometimes, there are sometimes where we get entrench early, and we don't have the block for it. And headbutt's useful there because we can get entrench later on. I know, the, the spy can't even counter us because we have frail reduction. I think we, hopefully we get set up pretty quick. You don't think, we need, you don't think the headbutt as a one of is, is okay?
Yeah, I know wounds are positive. Wounds are a two draw card draw. Wounds are positive. Yeah, one headbutt sometimes helps with like if we miss something. As a one of. And that's it. So event, we want to find Mind Bloom, right? So I was gonna go for like a, an upgrade or a recall, but I think I want the Mind Bloom. I regret this. I regret this. D4 armor is not that important though. Yeah, I guess we don't really need Mind Bloom, I guess. I don't really need Mind Bloom. I gotta walk my dog real quick. This is also a chance to get uh, Body Slam. And Body Slam is really positive. Let's get uh, Demon Form out. Too much block. It's a problem. I gotta end this at five though, yeah? Didn't we wanna end this at five? Instance at five? This guy does scale like crazy sometimes. So we gotta get to instance at five again though. He doesn't scale up enough for me. Right, I'll take a quick little break to walk my dogs. Alright, there's a five fear pot, who cares? Shrug it off, not necessary. Yeah, sure, it exists. Hi, I see you, I, I acknowledge you. But what? What about you, shrug it off? Why? Why do I want you? Do I want you? I don't. You guys are just stalling me. Sword Boomerang now, do we think about it? Because now we're gonna have strength dumping? Are we... In a world with no body slam, do we want a strength dumper? Because we are, might depend on demon form. I don't think we even need that. I think we're gonna do enough damage regardless. But it's a, it's a nice fallback mechanism to dump my damage from Demon Form. And we have so much time, I believe. I think we have so much time that... I don't even think I need the Sword Boomerang, because I think we have so much time with the Demon Form already. We already do enough damage. Uh, and without Body Slam, it is useful. But with Body Slam, we immediately regret it. So we have how many commons we're going to see, potentially. We're probably going to see like another three commons. Right, another three commons potentially. And then we have another chance to see a common at the uh, Act 4 Elite. So that's four commons, four chances of Body Slam. All right, I gotta walk my dog real quick. I'll be right back, guys. See that? My dog is doing that. So sometimes my my little dog has been get, showing aggression toward my bigger dog. Um. So what's been happening is that sometimes Isaac gets on top of me and Alby doesn't like it and he gets shows aggression. But what did I do to cause it to happen? What did I do? Can you can you tell me what I? What, what I did because sometimes Abby does that the small one when Isaac tries to get on top of me in bed I pulled one to the other oh hmm yeah you should be able to post the uh, I thought the subs were were permitted already
And someone said Havoc wasn't good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So my little one's been doing that. Why do you think that is? So I, I, I'm saying this is what my conclusion is. My conclusion is that I think I've having, I've been, um, I always been having some trouble with his place in the pack. I think I might be doing something wrong, and I'll be feeling some kind of way about his place in the pack. Let me explain why. Whenever Isaac's done eating, Albi feels the need to pee in his food bowl, to like mark his food bowl after Isaac's done eating. Like almost trying to say like, hey man, like I'm the boss around here. Um, like I don't like that you ate around the same time as me. Like I don't understand exactly what his what he's thinking. He's a dog, but I I'm assuming like if in general, like if a dog is peeing on another dog's food bowl. There must be some kind of thing about the pack going on, some kind of dominance, some kind of structure. Maybe I, there's something I could do to help them out, figure their sort, um, maybe I gotta do something to sort them out because that makes explain what happens. My little one is very persistent and tries to mount my Isaac and like do 69, but instead of a 69, it's more like he's on top. The little one wants, tries to get on top and he fights for this aggressively. And he's a small guy, but I think what he's trying to say is he's trying to be the dominant guy in this, this household. So he's possessive. He's trying to show dominance, right? And how do I put as a pack leader? So let's say I want to be the pack leader. He's not neutered, no. Let's say I want to be the pack leader and be like, listen, don't show dominance here. You guys are on the same like level of the hierarchy. Um, what do I got to do? Make them listen to you? Okay. I've been doing that more. I've been trying to make sure, like, I'm much more assertive, but, like, um, separate them when? Because it would be ideal if they, they, they eat together, right? Because the, the, they're brothers. Um, we are, um, We're trying to set up instant burner for five again. Ah, so when they're trying to take the food bowls away from and prevent the market. So prevent the market immediately, first off. So th is this something I could re retroactively fix pretty easily? Secondly, um... Well, so sometimes I'm in bed. Like I said, if Isaac gets on top of me in a weird way, he gets aggressive. So I, I gotta just be mindful of that. How do I show that it's okay that Isaac sometimes can get in my lap? They don't bite each other or fight each other over the food, but I'll be just like, after the fact, likes to pee in his food bowl. Which we got Frozen Knight kind of late. We don't need any of these cards. No, I don't want to physically dip, discipline them. I want to just be assertive. Give them equal attention? Okay. I've been giving them equal attention. What I do think I need to do more personally, I think I, Albie needs more independent time. Because Albie came as the second dog, and it was the brother, um, I feel like Isaac sometimes takes away from my ability to have one-on-one -on -one time with Albie, and Albie sometimes feels lost, and maybe he's not getting enough bonding independent time with me. And I want to make sure that I um, I train Albi like like I don't know thirty minutes to an hour a day. Maybe there's thirty minutes to start, and just give him more independent time, and just have him listen to me and do some commands. I'm thinking like that should help. Did we did we want to shop after all? No. Yeah, yeah. I know positive reinforcement works. I don't, I don't hit my dogs. I, I never plan to. I never plan to.
You spent hours per day training? Yeah, I mean, I want to start with 30 minutes. Um, and just get my independence time. But yeah, ideally probably should do more time a day. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm not perfect in that sense. So we want instance on what again? Five, still. No, 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 guys. I have never, no intention of hitting my dogs. No intention. Don't be ridiculous. I'm talking about like one on one training. They are, they are going great. Ah, uh, very nice. Aquila, Corgi, Pipple Mix, Chibi, a Beagle, Pepper, and Long Hair Dash Wound. Uh, can I get into some five in this fight? Yeah, I guess. Uh, it has, it has to be four here. Put your dog behind the door and give your younger dog some alone time. He came to this and doesn't have enough alone time. Yeah, I think... Yeah, it, it goes both ways. So, I think Isaac needs to realize, like, it's not all about him. I, Albie needs his time. He's getting better at that. And Albie needs alone time with me, for sure. I, I gotta spend a lot of alone time with Albie. Why, why would we not take a purpose number three? So, why would I not take a purpose number three? Uh, it only helps me set up, no? And it, and it exhausts itself. Why would I not take it? Also, think of the thumbnail for YouTube. What can we say for YouTube? Let's make notes, right? Because when I edit it, sometimes I forget what happened in this run. What would be the YouTube title for this? I don't even know. It's so broken. It's ridiculous. So much going on. The ultimate calendar deck? I don't even know. I need, I would like body slam though. Yeah, we would like body slam. We're still looking for mind bloom, right? But why? Why do we want mind bloom? We want to find body slam. That's why we want the fights. I know, I know. I mean, how nice would it have been to have gotten a... <laughs> how nice would it have been to have uh, no barricade here? It would have been horrible. What if we had bottled? Nothing. Alright, so we want to put the... Um, instance on five, yeah? So how do we kill next turn? We can't kill next turn. How much is Bash Strike doing? Not enough. Bash Strike is not doing enough. Does Blood for Blood do enough? If I do Blood for Blood, does it do enough to proc of Calendar? Math time, Calendar is 52. My man's at 90, 92. If I strike for Blood for Blood, it is currently doing how much? 30, but vulnerable. It's doing 45. 45 minus 92. We're looking at 50. 
48. Blood, he gets four block. 48 plus four, 52. 48 plus four is 52. 48 plus four is 52. It cost two. I was supposed to, uh, by the way, just FYI, I was supposed to uh, take offering and take the damage, I guess. Do we care about Yeah, we do, we do, we do. Alright, cool. I was gonna say, do we care about Insta 5? But yeah, we do. I did the math and all of a sudden it's like, oh no, no, no. Uh, Isaac, stop crying. No more. You guys are separated and that's the choice that I'm making. And I'm gonna start making sure you understand that, okay? Stop. You can't be begging for attention all the time. No. Now's not the time. No. Okay, this is a five. Let's go. Blood pie, huge. Dark embrace. But why not? Yeah, what well, editing? True, 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 true. 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 Why not? Is too much card draw a bad thing? Sometimes it messes up Warcry. Sometimes it messes up Warcry, huh? It could be a, a, a hurt us sometimes. What? No! So what do we upgrade? We have only Headbutt and Bash's upgrades. Lift. Yo, thanks for 500 bits. Have some great ones. Catch everyone later. Hoping work calms down next week. Yeah, me too, man. This is awkward. Imagine having... I have Art of War. I don't have Body Slim. Oh, we don't need it. Imagine. Imagine Entrench not being able to be played. That's what we have Headbutt for. This is why we have headbutt. This is why we have headbutt. Lo 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 lo. It's all good, TP. Thank you, as as that. Oh, I ball. Oh yeah. Oh hi 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 hi. All right, let's set up into that five, yeah. Oh look, check this out. Oops. Come on, Papo. Come on. Come here. Where's my feed? Where's my feed? Alright, we ended at 5, yeah? Guys, I don't have body slam. If I have body slam, Demon Form is the courage. But right now, Demon Form is actually what we need to beat the heart. Because I don't have body slam. Can you believe it? Can you believe it, partner? Oh, wait, go on. I knew it was going to be you. I'm prepared for this. I'm prepared for this. Um, excuse me. I would like to have headbutt and trench. Um, if I just if I did nothing, I literally just flame barrier and previous and trench next year won the game. But this gives it a little bit more intrigue. A little bit harder. Ooh, are we gonna get the second entrench or not? 
Ooh, is he gonna do it? Uh oh. Oh shit, it's getting scary. Do we have an evolve? No. Oh, big bird, are you gonna do it to me? Oh, we found it in time, anyways. It didn't even matter. Stone, st stone counter, proc it. We wanna end this fight at four incense. Remember, four incense. Act for elite gets easy. I could even do five incense, honestly. Five incense stops 30 damage on average against the Act 4 Elite. Turn two, ah, 60, 60 plus. All right, actually, let's put it on four. Why not? Bendis, you're never here for the hard runs, huh? Never here when I'm struggling tooth and nail five hours in a run. Bleeding and winning. Stone Condor was going to kill them anyways. Not anymore. This is a new leaf, Ventus. It's a new leaf. Chat only holds me back now. Just kidding. Chat sometimes helps. Celebrating my vaccine by giving you money. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks for 100 bits. And I hope your vaccine leaves you with no trouble. Four inferiors. I know. I know. How dare I? So I'm four, right? We're about to finish the run, we're about to finish the run. But the Voyager might... The Voyager almost stopped me. The last... The last counter, because not even Frail can stop me. Not even Frail can stop me. I had me sucking short last week, I admit it. It was right to me booty, you get it? Oh, hard, 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 hard. Oh, I see it, that's funny, man. Do we take the strength? I mean, we don't really need, um... Butts McGee is actually a great name for a pirate, yeah. Oh, we don't need to upgrade... Bash? Okay, um... Body slam, how serendipitous it would be. Boom. Bag of prep. Oh boy, bag of prep, why not? Yo, Cyber Charge, thanks for the gifted sub to Butts McGee. Appreciate that. Why not take a bag of prep? And did we take Sobum Ring for the lols? Just to have some strength number? 
hey, this is a barricade deck, but I do damage with strength. And that is the... That encompasses Ironclad, doesn't it? That encompasses the strength. And the craziness of Ironclad. I could take Sir I suppose. I mean, is this still good? I, because I think Demon Farm is already going to kill things with our damage as it is. We don't need the Sword Boomerang. But it doesn't hurt because we don't have Body Slam, so why not have some damage, I suppose? I mean, if you have to pull my arm, I suppose I'll do it. Barricade. Evolve. Druid. I don't, I'm scared to draw here. I'm scared to draw here. I also kind of want Art of War next turn. I'm scared to draw because what if I just draw that beautiful, beautiful entrench or beautiful, beautiful impervious? It would be heartbreaking for me. I cannot forgive myself. But what I want to think about is doing Art of War. Art of War it is. Because what do you want energy? And why do you want it? Because you want to set up. And once you set up, the game's over, right? Well, here it is. I'm a dirty lucker, and I admit it. I admit I'm a dirty lucker. Oh, I can't play. Oh, Dragon Brace is actually hurting me. Dragon Brace is actually hurting me. Oh, no. Head button. Oh, no. I told you Dragon Brace Warcry wasn't the move. Start making sound effects whenever something crazy happens. Like, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! And why not havoc? So remember, that was awful. Uh, you have a horrible aim. At least give me a reason to put you on the team. Okay. Uh. Well. Well, we gotta end this on four, yeah? End this on four? Game is so over, it's ridiculous. How do we want to style on the heart? This is so over, it's ridiculous. Are you better now? Are you feeling better? You're still a little drunk. Yeah, we're gonna have to work on your aim. Don't worry, you have time. Okay, so we want you on four. On four, he said. Yar, ard, matey. So body slam, we have... Oopsies. A 91% chance to find a common. Now, what is the chance that we find body slam out of all the commons? I don't want to do the math. Yeah, we don't even need to buy some at this point. We, why would we take buy some? We have some boomerang. On four, yeah? You're making me suffer here by moving this whole four shenanigan. And I don't mean to say four shenanigans. Uh, I actually might not be able to kill next turn. Because he gets some block here. I actually may not be able to kill. And if that's the case, I have to wait this all over again. I mean, we have time. Why not? We've already taken two hours. Of course we can kill. Panagraph. <laughs> For what? I cry a little bit inside. So we can do uh, uppercut number two, sure. But we already have permanent weaken. Bash is weaken. Uppercut's three weaken. Clothesline's weaken. Ooh, spicy. Okay. So, we can Warcry the Entrench. That's relevant. Extremely relevant. 
Let's Warcry first. Never mind. Begin our bash train. Whoo, boy! Tricks are for kids. Tricks are for kids. Don't do it. No, 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 no. Don't tell me that you have headbutt and trench. No. 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 How dare you? Yes. I don't want to hit uppercut though. There is an uppercut. Let's set up instant burner for uh, you yeah, know next game. I want that back. I want that back. You see, hear me, sir? That's perfect damage. Look, a little bit short. Okay, to be fair, it's a little bit short. A little bit short, but you know it, it does the job. Instant runners back, and the what? Flame bear is 90 damage. Hell yeah, 90 damage will do. Malbank immediately broke it to buy the impervious, which was speculative. And then next floor we found impervious plus. We had two impervious plus already. Then we got to the heart. It off. Sorry, we got to the act one boss. We beat it, and it offered barricade and impervious number three. And that was the beginning of this run. And crazy stuff. Insane stuff. Four win streak. Fifteen and six. The goal is twenty three and seven. Uh, 3,215. I was way off.